DemocracyNow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, the number of Americans receiving food stamps is at an all-time high. Earlier this year, the Agricultural Department said one in eight Americans, nearly 38 million people, received food stamps last October. The New York Times reported that about six million Americans received food stamps, saying they have no other income. A new investigation from Color Lines magazine, supported by the Nation Institute's Investigative Fund, shows that some poor families are forced to sell their food stamps on the black market for cash in order to survive this prolonged recession. When Congress overhauled welfare in 1996, it created the Temporary Aid to Needy Families, or uh, TANF, program, which placed time limits on aid and made cash assistance contingent on finding a job. Well, TANF is up for reauthorization this fall, and journalist Seth Wessler's investigation focuses on the impact of both the recession and welfare reform in Hartford, Connecticut, a state which has the shortest welfare time limit in the country, just 21 months. Seth Wessler is a senior research associate at Applied Research Center, think tank on race, and a staff writer for Color Lines magazine. His article, Selling Food Stamps for Kids' Shoes, is available online at colorlines.com. We welcome you to Democracy Now! Uh, explain what's happening. In Hartford. Well, this really is a story about what happens when the Great Recession meets welfare reform from 1996. It's a story about what happens when people are pushed off of cash assistance by a welfare program that's intent is to push people off of cash assistance, families trying to raise their children. What people do now that even those low-wage poverty jobs that families have been stuck in for now a decade and a half aren't available. And so I spent uh, the winter reporting from Hartford, Connecticut, a city that's long been hit by the disappearance of manufacturing jobs and is struggling economically to figure out what families are doing now that the recession has hit and there really is no substantive safety net for poor families. And what I found was that people are forced to make very difficult decisions and are forced to trade their food assistance at bodegas for pennies on the dollar in order to make some cash to pay their bills, to pay rent, to buy. In the case of one woman I spent time with who we're calling Eva in this story, she asked her name be changed, to buy children's shoes for her kids. So people are forced to, to in the end, break the law uh, to get by. and. Uh, what I see this as is a, is a story about poor families innovating to survive in a uh, horribly uh, difficult economy after years of a, a stripped safety net. Um, Eva, the woman I spent uh, three months with talking to, um, was cut off of cash assistance last March. She's in a state, Connecticut, with the shortest time limit in the country after welfare reform. States were given vast amount of power to determine how long people could stay on cash assistance, how uh, generous the program would be. And the state set the shortest time limit of any state in the country. She was cut off of cash assistance in the middle of the worst job crisis in a generation and has been searching for work endlessly without any luck. It's a, she's a woman who's been working low-wage poverty jobs for uh, the greater part of a decade and, and now can't even find one of those. She's precipitously close to the edge now of uh, becoming homeless, of not being able to food, feed her kids, and she's forced to, to sell her food stamps like many women who I talked to in Connecticut in order to get by. Well, Connecticut is obviously also uh, Hartford is the insurance capital of the of the United States. It's one of the states, uh, one of the wealthiest states in the union. But you have these uh, cities, Hartford, Bridgeport, and New Haven, which have desperately poor communities in the in the central cities. Uh, what? Um, how has Connecticut uh, been dealing in terms of its food stamp allotment? What does it give to a family? Uh, because, I'm, I mean, the selling of food stamps has been in existence for actually for quite a while in many communities. Has it uh, increased in recent years? Yeah, I mean, a lot of women I talked to have said that in times when they are out of work, they can't find a job, and there's no income coming in after being cut off, pushed off of the cash assistance rules, that they have had to sell their food assistance to, to get by, um, to trade it at a bodega, to, to sell it for cash. And it's become very clear that that trend has increased. It's become a real way of feeding and 
paying for rent and clothing uh, families at this point. So it's, it's, it's definitely on the increase. I mean, Eva receives 520 something dollars a month in, in food stamps a month. She's selling, um, she's buying her food with that money. She's um, using that money to pay off her debt at the bodega. She has, at the end of every month, about $100 in debt. Um, she's been, and then she, she trades in the rest for cash in order to, in order to pay for her, for her, uh, for her basics. And uh, about 10 other women in, in Connecticut said that they had to do the same thing. I mean, we're, we're in a situation in which, almost 15 years ago, the federal government basically decimated the cash assistance program after another decade and a half of highly racialized attacks against the program that demonized the program, stigmatized the problem deeply, and at the same time, consecutive administrations, re Republican and Democratic administrations, have destigmatized the food stamp program. And we're seeing now that that program is on the rise, that, that it, there's more access to that program. So people are leaning more heavily now on that program. I wanted to bring Lou Santana into the conversation, longtime community organizer, welfare rights activist in Hartford, Connecticut, director of the advocacy group uh, Vecinos Unidos. Um, this issue of selling uh, food stamps for shoes for the kids. Are you concerned that exposing this loose will simply mean they're going to crack down on uh, selling food stamps as opposed to dealing with the problem? Most certainly, yes. That's one of the biggest concerns. Myself and people, because uh, um, it makes, it's going to be harder for people, you know, because the government, instead of uh, uh, working with us, with community organizations to try to alleviate the problems that people are having so they don't have to resort to illegal activities. What they do is uh, make it harder and harder so people, it, I'm, I'm very concerned that that's, that's what they will do. Hopefully not, but that's what the concern is. And, uh, Luz, can you talk about the impact uh, uh, in your city of both the recession and uh, the mortgage crisis uh, in terms of how more desperate people are becoming? Yes, it's getting, you know, with the, because of the, what happened, the crash in the economy, uh, it, it means that a lot more people have to depend on public, on public assistance, have to depend on the government that, you know, um, for making ends meet. Uh, we had, in our, in our organization, we had seen a bigger increase of families that used to own a home before, but they no longer own it because they you know, they lost it, you know, um, due to foreclosure. And, um, this, you know, the stories are on and on and on, and so many people, they got really hit so bad because they were at the edge to begin with. You know, they were at the edge of, they had difficulties before, and now they got bigger, bigger problems. And uh, the problem, the bigger problem we have is that because of the crisis they hit in the state, the state was sourcing to cut programs that are needed for families to survive and to take care of their families and their children. Luz Santana, we're going to have to leave it there on this issue of survival, but we'll c certainly continue to cover it. And Seth Wessler, I want to thank you very much for being with us of Color Lines magazine.